the epicness of the, of the sound, kind mm. of the, the choir, the pipes, all, all these extra elements that kind of give it that, that strength. When, when was this thought of? Was that in pre-production already that, that you knew that you want to have it bombastic? Uh? Well, when we did pre-production in Finland in our rehearsing place, he mentions, mentioned uh, that he had some ideas putting some additional things here and there and we were like oh okay whatever <laughs> like this <laughs> and uh, during the recording session he told that I might put some uh, orchestra things here and, and there but but you when you haven't heard them you can't imagine how it will be in the end and when he started to send final mixes with uh, with these orchestra things and and and, and, and all additional vocals and uh, strings and stuff like this it, it sound really fresh and mm. uh, big and uh, uh, I was a little bit surprised <laughs> mm. and I, I want to get into the emotion of that a little bit because well the, is, is there one song that stuck, uh, sticks out for you where you had to go where you had to go looking for a certain emotion and the music helped you kind of find it well yeah I think the daughter of hate was okay. was a great great one to do because I really got into in the theme on that one. It's about facing the, your fears and uh, the inspiration for that song came from our lyricist mother's dream. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great and uh, yeah, it there were there are some really great moments w when I was singing there and 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 when the, there was this whole epicness in our music, it, it felt really great to do some growls in in some massive parts and and uh, it it inspires me a lot. And do, do you do, then go to uh, your own memories or your own uh, yeah of yeah of course because sometimes yeah mm. I think singing is, singing is sometimes like acting you have to kind of. Uh, Maybe sometimes, if there is a really sensitive part, maybe you can imagine a lovely person or something like this. Or, mm. or if, if there is a sad thing, you can imagine something really sad what happened in your life. It helps a lot, of course. And uh, that's what we are trying to do in, in studio, trying to get emo emotions on, on the record. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, your lyricist, Pekka. Yeah. How, how does your um, interaction with him work? Do, do you just let him go write, write a whole yeah. bunch of lyrics? And yeah. Then, okay. So, so when he comes back with, with these lyrics mm -hmm. and this concept of, uh, I, I think, kind of the rise and fall of civilization, yeah. the cyclical nature of, of, mm. of uh, life, how do you then, wh what was your first uh, reaction to, to going through these songs? Going well, he writes everything in Finnish, of course, mm. and uh, actually I, I met Beck a couple of times during last summer and we talk about the themes and, and stuff like this and, and he told that it's, it's not going to be like a, a concept album. It was more like a stories uh, inspired from his life and, and, and uh, old beliefs and stuff like this. Mm. And, uh, but uh, it's, it's weird how well our music and his stories fit together and uh, it must be because we are both in Finland mm. and we share some kind of uh, same philosophy or what, whatever it is. And uh, we have lots of folk elements in our music and uh, mm. he's really into old beliefs and, and myths and stuff like this. And uh, we both respect each other as an artist, so it, it, it works pretty well. And am I right in saying that he isn't necessarily a fan of metal music? Uh, uh, no, no, he's not a fan of metal music. Maybe nowadays, when, mm. when he's been working with us many years, and I, I think he opened his ears for metal also. Uh, but he has composed some stuff like acoustic, small stories, and uh, he know, knows how to sing. So he's really into music, but uh, not in metal, I think. <laughs> but he's really open-minded when, when it comes to the music and uh, uh, he's also really creative to doing paintings and drawings and stuff okay. like this. So, and then, uh, well, you mentioned uh, the song "Daughter of Hate," where, yeah. where he features on uh, for a little bit. So, so, and, and I assume he's heard the album. So, what what was his reaction to it? Well, he really loves amorphous music, and and uh, he feels it that he's re really doing important thing, and he's proud that he can work with us, and. Uh, uh, he was really into idea that he he will do this uh, spoken words on that song, mm. 
So it was a beautiful mo moment when we recorded his part in, in Helsinki and he wanted to do it a couple of times and uh, it was pure magic when I was listening it like, oh yeah, he's, he had this really uh, <coughs> powerful storytelling voice mm. and uh, you can hear it, this is not a teenager talking now. And <laughs> right. um, Esa, for you, what concept on the album or what song uh, kind of uh, did you gravitate towards or did it hit, hit you the most? Was there something that struck you about, about one of the songs? Um, now that I've been listening to the album, there's uh, what I think, what I find the, the perfect match between the lyrics and, and, and the music is the, the final track, Pirates on the Coast. And it, it gives really strong images. Yeah. So uh, I really like how that turned out. There's a lot of other great moments like uh, in, in, of course, in Daughter of Hate and uh, the opening track, The Bee. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of new elements that, that we have now that we haven't used before. So, But uh, Pirates on the Coast is probably, probably the, the gives me the strongest emotions, the link between the lyrics and, and the music is it's, it's super. Yeah, it would be nice to do like a proper anim animation mm. video for that one because it, it gives some, such uh, strong pictures when you're listening the music and, 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 and the lyrics. Well, that, that's an interesting point because I think uh, your music has always been quite cinematic, but maybe on this album with, with all the strings, with the pipes, with all those added elements, it's, it's even more cinematic. So yeah. it, do you have those pictures in your mind as you are in the studio, as you're performing live? Do you have those pictures in your mind? Well, sometimes, yeah. Not, not when, when rehearsing, but okay. of course, when, when the songs are ready and you have the lyrics and stuff and, and playing on, on stage, sometimes you remember some reflections from the studio mm. and that's that's great moment yeah there's like the musical themes what we have on the albums because the, the music is is very often based on the like some certain melody line or mm -hmm. some certain themes and if you reach those themes now with the, like real flutes or real uh, orchestral instruments or choirs I, I think it's pretty natural that it gives uh, a lot like a cinematic or mm. or movie score kind of a feeling and especially that that we we have a lot of uh, intros and outros and, right. and those those uh, ambient sort of sea parts in the songs well for instance well one of the songs that kind of uh, stuck out stuck out for me was the golden elk where you have this this kind of break with uh, a guitar solo and uh, acoustic guitar solo mm. and all these kind of elements so, so when you're doing that is, is that an experimentation on your part do you think okay let's just try this or? Well, working with Jens there is no experiments okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is just uh, his decisions <laughs> let's do it like this no okay. of course you know we have the the ideas but but there was like this uh, like like that uh, uh, it's actually it's a Turkish guitar mm. and the player there and uh, another example is is the saxophone like you know he, he was the, usually that that kind of an idea could come from us but that was during the pre-production. Yes, it was like, okay, let's put saxophone here. And when you listen to it, it like it comes straight out of the bushes. It's like, what <laughs> is happening here? But it, it works really well. But it, you know, but he he had all these little details yeah. that might sound like very, very um, experimental and, and mm. let's do it now moments. They were really like thought and t taken care of. Okay. <laughs> But it's, it's good that he has some kind of taste in, with his ideas because mm. uh, having a crossover element in your music, it's, it's always a risk. And uh, mm. I think it's, it's great that you might have some part that really surprises the listener. And right. that's what Jens is trying to do, I think. And uh, on this album, we have lots of these punchlines, you know, all of a sudden something really weird happens and that's great. And obviously it sounds great on the, uh, on the record, but then when, when you go towards the live shows and preparing mm. for the live shows, does it become more difficult because you have more of those, like a choir and you have to kind of incorporate that maybe in the music? Well, we definitely we use samples before. Okay. Some of the stuff we have okay. to sample. Uh, perhaps Tommy can bring the saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> and so on. <laughs> But yeah, I don't think it's a problem. 
you know, there's a lot of stuff uh, keyboard player Santer can do mm. with uh, with keyboards. And uh, yeah, as I said, of course, we use uh, some of the cores we have to sample. Mm. And like the vocals user. Yeah, I think it depends also the guy who's doing live sound for us, mm. how he sees the music. Mm. I think we have that kind of songs on, on the album if we wants to put them really, really huge, it would be easy to using lots of samples and stuff like this. But I, I don't know if that's the direction that we want to go. Um, on the, the basic idea is just six guys playing heavy metal and having fun, and, and uh, that should be the thing. <laughs> well, with that in mind then, because uh, well, you've been doing it for quite a while, and, and you say that it's just a couple of guys trying to have fun. So, yeah. so what is your definition of success? Well, I don't know how you measure success. <laughs> uh, to be able to do this for a living, I, I think it's one goal and that's something we reached. We are not rich people, but we can do this and we uh, we love this and, and uh, it's been great. It, it's been a great journey. Um, I just hope that we can do this many years. It, it's been fun and, and uh, we are good friends together. Of course, when we are not touring on at studio, we, we are just not hanging all all the time together. <laughs> it's really? good to have some holiday also, <laughs> but uh, but still, when we are traveling, uh, we talk a lot and and stuff like this. So there's a great chemistry inside the band, and that's really important if you want to have like a long career. Mm. Well, this this might be a little bit of a mean question then, but you've been making music together for quite a while. Esa, is there something um, that you've learned from Tommy over the years about music, about life? Um, I've learned lots of things what not to do. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, you know, what I've learned from Tommy. I, I think Tommy has a, he's got a good attitude, like, um, and, um, yeah, he's a, he's a good person and great character and, 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 and the kind of friend you want to be also to another guy. So I think, uh, yeah. Because it, is that important to, to well, it sounds like a silly question even as I ask it now, but, but to be able to kind of uh, have fun with each other, because if you make that many albums, if you go on tour and you spend so much time together, it's not cut out for everybody, I think. Yeah, so, so and I think there's something unique in our band because, of course, we know lots of people <coughs> from this business and, and um, other players and, and, and technical dudes. and. Uh, we have heard it m many times that we really have a good chemistry inside the band, and for us, it's we haven't thought it that mm. way. Mm. We're just like this is normal, but it's not normal. Usually, the guys are arguing and, and fighting, and they are not even talking to each other. For mm. example, Corn, <laughs> I think they did one tour that they were traveling with own buses. You know, they didn't even fit to the same bus. Those guys. Yeah. That's of course when you are doing really long tour, you get beat, you get pissed off. Uh, for for other guys, but uh, but still, we're trying to talk a lot. If there is a problem, we're trying to solve it somehow, and uh, trying to al always. Uh, when we're touring, we, we're trying to give a free space. If someone goes to the bunk, we don't go there and say. <laughs> we we understand that everyone needs some personal space mm. also. Yeah, it's pretty obvious that when you share that much time together, it's. A you know, not not every day is, is like a funny day, and we mm. want to play games with each other. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, everybody has has uh, harder days, and and then then, but yeah, as Tommy said, we pretty much know how to read each other. So if if somebody's having like a, a harder day, you know, we don't go there and, and mm -hmm. start to, to chat and give give more space and, and yeah. Finally, then I, I want to go back a little bit in time, in, and I know you didn't. Uh, you joined a little bit later, but yeah. if, if we go maybe 20, 25 years into your past when you were star starting out in this industry and, mm -hmm. and making th this music, did you expect to be where you are now? Oh, I would never believe. You know, when if we go that back, that we, you know, when we formed the band and and great things started to happen, like we got the opportunity to record our first album and and that was already like a dream to come true or play in some local club in Helsinki that, that, that a lot of bands played. Playing there was like a big dream. 
that we achieved. So, uh, but yeah, I guess none of us would have believed if, if, if someone would say that we would be here after 28 years <laughs> doing the same thing and actually doing pretty good. So, um, so yeah, have to be happy for that. And then for you? Well, I remember when I was like uh, six or seven years old, old, I was pretty sure that I will be a big star. So here we are. <laughs> no, I'm not a big star, but uh, somehow I felt some kind of special. Of course, that's the thing that everyone maybe feels when they are like six years old. But, uh, but uh, I must ad admit that, that they gave me some kind of self-confidence in a way. Last question then, and um, it's, it's a very straightforward question, but what, what uh, do you get out of this music, making this music and performing it? What do you get out of it? Well, I think this is more like a... It's stupid to say lifestyle, but it, it's great that you can do something you really like for a living. And sometimes it's, it's difficult to draw the line between hobby or job or anything like this but it, it, it's great because uh, this industry gathers people who are into same kind of things that I am and it, it's great to work with these kind of people and uh, and usually there is a great sense of humor also it, it's great to have a job that you can have a good time at the same time then you have to have like a traveler heart and that's because this is mainly what this this thing is about it's about traveling and it's funny when when you're on tour or doing a long tour you basically you of course you miss home and, and, and to go back home but when you're home like a couple of weeks then you get used to that and you start to miss <laughs> the road bus again and it's funny it's it but i guess in in it's it's in the blood in the in, in, within all all touring musicians that if you can't tolerate it then it's it's like you know it must be horrible and I think that's one of the reasons why probably many musicians have quitted or then they have a stage just like you know they write music they are basically in the band but they don't do any tours because it's it's a different different life all right gentlemen thank you very much for your thank time. you thank you cool thank you